it's Lisa. I'm going to be doing a layout using this bright colorful paper and I've got some paints out here because I'm going to do some jelly printing first. These two photos, uh, we have sort of some blue and pink and we have a few other colors there and the kids are holding balloons. So what I'm looking for is kind of a semi-transparent look to go with the balloon theme. I'm going to be using some um, some jelly plates and some laminating film on top of the jelly plates. So first I want to add some color to my jelly plate. I don't want to completely cover up the back. I want to leave some of it open so there'll be some clear and some sticky left on there. And I don't, I always, I always end up covering up a lot of the back of my jelly plate when I'm doing this, but I do leave some open areas. Adding some silver paint from Golden. And I let, when you to do this kind of jelly printing, you're letting the plate dry between layers, which is almost contrary to what you're used to doing. Um, and I left this, I think, days, like a day in between, and you don't have to do that. It's just what worked into my schedule. I'm going to add some stenciling over the top of this dried layer. So usually, you know, you can leave it for a half an hour and let it dry. It depends on your paint. It doesn't have to be that long. I'm using a couple of round objects there. That's the middle of a, a um, tape dispenser and the middle of a glue dot roll. Add some green circles to this as well. A soft green, not real bright. And then a tip I got from the um, Jelly Arts website is to use some red or some black paint or any color you want and a Q-tip and just put some dots of paint on for these. And it does need to be very, very dry before you put the laminating film on. So in my case, I left it overnight. Doesn't, I don't always leave it overnight uh, to do this, but I did in this case. I've got my nice dry jelly plate surface. I'm taking my laminating film and I'm going to cut it in circles. You can also do this with packing tape. Just need a clear sticky surface. And I found that my Creative Memories cutters worked really well with this. My punches, not so much. Some of the punches worked well and some of them really got caught up in the film. It didn't hurt the punches, but they just didn't punch really well. So here's one that just did not punch really well, but that's okay. I got several circles cut and I kind of arranged them on my uh, jelly plate and then I'm just going to peel the backing off so I have the clear and sticky side and I'll press that down and then when I peel it up I'll get the, the whole design. So unlike most jelly prints where the bottom layer shows up the most, on this kind of jelly pl printing it's what you see on top that shows up the most because that's what's sticking but it'll, it'll go all the way through to stick all the layers. Now, um, i got to pick a background. I have a gray stripe and a solid gray. I'm going to try some of the jelly plates cuts on those. And the solid looks really good, but I kind of like the stripe because I like the playful look for this kid page. So that's the one I went with, and then I'm just going to arrange all of these on that background. You could use any kind of shapes that you wanted, or you could use the whole background if you wanted to just do a whole piece of laminating film. I'm also picking out a little bit of the paper to go around the photos. Just do a little border top and bottom. And these circles have some sticky on them, but they're going to need a little bit of adhesive too because I didn't leave a lot of background that was uncovered with paint. It won't take a very heavy adhesive at all. I'm 
And we're just kind of doing a diagonal arrangement from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner. Bring the eye across the photos. And we're going to frame the photos with a couple of uh, pieces of the 6x6 six six papers. And what I did was just slip a piece in the underneath and then again at the top and I end up with this little gap between the photos. Once I get this glued on you'll see in just a moment there's a gap and I'm going to end up piecing that in with just a little bit of extra laminating film. It doesn't happen to be cut in a circle but it doesn't matter because um, all I'm trying to do is just fill in that extra space there. And I've got a couple of circles that hang off the edge, so we're going to trim the bottoms of those. And I've decided on these um, hexagon-shaped um, enamel dots to go around the edges a little bit. But first we're going to do a title. Um, I thought this was a kid page. I would do a hand-cut title. I have not done one of these in ages, uh, but I think it will be fun. We're just picking out several different pieces of the designer paper. Not too busy a prints and it's just going to say kid fun and this first K that I draw is too small I'll come back and draw a little bit larger one but I'll just draw out my letters and then I'll cut them out by hand now in keeping with the amount of silver that I have in the background of the uh, jelly circles I'm going to put a little silver around the edge of the letters. It gives them a little bit of shadow and it kind of brings in this silvery gray color. I'm sorry my head's in the way, but I'm just going around the very edge, there you go, with the silver. And I also have some silver trim. I think this is Webster's Pages. It's really old. I've had a long time. It's very pretty, fun trim, and we'll just take one little section of that glue it on. I also use some button embellishment, something I don't do very often, and I've mounted those on some silver punched paper. And then we'll add our little jelly pieces, or our little um, enamel dot pieces. Okay, the only thing I'm going to add to this page is the journaling up here and the names and dates of the kids are down here. So I want to go ahead and share the page with you. We did the jelly printing on laminating film, which is a really fun technique, and you get that semi-transparent look to it, which I think goes with the balloons in the photo. And I've added some silver to that, so I continued using silver around the edge of the letters and this little bit of trim, and then these punched pieces where I got to use some buttons from my stash, something that I rarely uh, seem to use anymore, and just a few little enamel pieces. So a fun page for a fun day, and um, this was my husband's day with his grandchildren, so I will put uh, the information up here about that. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the timing of when this video is going to go out and when my sketchbook is going to be ready, but very, very soon the 2016 uh, sketchbook will be out. It's much thicker than this. I haven't printed all of it yet, um, but it's available uh, or will be available for download, and it will have uh, 40 plus sketches, scrapbook sketches and card sketches and all kinds of great things in there. So be on the lookout for that. If you do scrapbooking, it's a 
wonderful resource, a great way to, f there's, there's different indexes in there. So if you have buttons or you have um, brads or trim or something and you want to use it up there, it tells you, you know, which sketches will help you do that. So lots of good information. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope you'll check out my videos the next time around.